Hey Christian, are you ready to help your brother move today? I should be down there in about an hour. I, I, I need to go to the hospital. Christian, is everything okay? I, I, I don't know. I, I just need to go to the hospital. All right, I'll be down there as soon as I can. This was a conversation I had with my mom during my second semester of freshman year down at the University of Arizona. After that call, the fire department found me naked outside of my dorm room and immediately rushed me to the hospital. After spending three weeks in a hospital bed in between Tucson and Phoenix, the doctors decided that I, need, I needed brain surgery twice. I had developed a rare bacterial infection that spread from my head to my toe. After my second brain surgery, I, uh, <clears throat> I remember not being able to pick up a spoon and my mom having to spoon feed me. At this point in time, I had so many questions. Why did this happen to me? What caused the infection? And what did I do to deserve this? I remember so vividly that experience, that hopeless experience of not being able to feed myself. This marked the lowest point in my life. I was back to square one where I didn't know what the road to recovery would look like. But something, a rage, lit a fire inside me. Not an angry rage, but a rage that sparked something that I wanted to become uh, faster, stronger, and smarter than I was before. The point of this story is to not make you feel sorry for me, but actually the complete opposite. I had a life-altering decision I had to make. I could either A, be a victim and feel sorry for myself, or B, get off my butt and do something about it to become a better version of myself. The doctors told me it would take about a year to recover and I'd most likely mix the next semester of school. But boy, was the doc wrong. I recovered in just four months after pushing through occupational therapy, which I equate to physical therapy, but for the brain. One of the exercises I clearly remember is them having a bowl of rice and me putting my hand in the bowl of rice to find paper clips to reestablish the connection from my brain to my sense of feeling. The easiest tasks were now tedious and difficult and I was rehabbing to learn these different tasks but I continue to push through. I wanted to share this experience today because at the end of the day, it's about our attitude and perspective that make all the difference. I had a choice to make when I was sitting on that hospital bed. I could either be the victim of my circumstances or I could use this experience to catapult me to launch me in my career and for the rest of my life and as a learning experience. What my brother has always said is the one thing we have 100% complete control of in life is our attitude. We may not pick our circumstances or the situations we're brought in, but each and every day we make an active choice on our attitude and how we want to live each day. So 
with my icebreaker speech, I want to take this time and I want everyone to choose how they want to li uh, live the rest of just today, just today, just try it on today of how you want to experience that day. So go out and become faster, stronger, smarter than you were yesterday. Don, fellow Toastmaster, thank you so much.